G'day everyone, welcome back to Organic Power. Hello, thanks for tuning in. We've been off grid for a year now, and we're going to show you in this episode how we've captured enough energy to run a four bedroom home with two adults and two kids, supplying us with enough energy for all our needs. So stay tuned, and we'll show you exactly what we've done. Here's the last quarterly bill we just received. Nothing owing. It's always good to see that come in. We also have a grid tide system here. We've had that for 10 years or so, probably a little bit longer. So that now feeds back into the grid pretty much all day long while the off-grid does the work for us here. So we now get a credit every quarter. A lot of people out there are fairly skeptical about off-grid energy. And my wife was a little unsure when I was spending a few bucks on the system in the initial stage, but now that we've got the system all up and running, she's very happy with it. I sure am. I love harnessing the power of the sun and to get that zero dollar bill at the end of it, it's just amazing. We'll quickly take a look on the PC here at the system operating. This is the remote console. This is connected directly to the Servo GX unit by the LAN cable. And once you pull that up, you'll get this display. This uh, display has been modified with what you get from factory. You can check out all of that in episodes on my channel, how to change it to look like this. But anyway, this is the inverter here in the center, providing the power to the house. There's three of those. It's a 15 kVA Victron system with a 5 kVA Fronius unit AC coupled. So 20 kilowatt in total, or 20 kVA in total. The green box is the load to the house. So we're using seven kilowatts at the moment, 234 volts, it's 30 amps. We've got the spa heating and also the air conditioner heating the house. It's winter time at the moment, one o'clock in the afternoon. Down here, this is the AC coupled Fronius. This Fronius unit is not completed yet. There's still some more panels to be added. So it's a work in progress. Got the PV charger display at the bottom here. These are the Victron MPPTs that are in the off-grid shed. If I click on that icon, Got the 450-200 with the four channels, the 250-60 and the 150-35. Here's the battery bank, roughly 42 kilowatt hour. Consumed 1.5 amp hours. Here's the details on the inverter. At the moment, it's producing 5.6 kilowatts at 233 volts, 50 hertz, and outputting 24 amps. The red box at the top is the generator input. I've limited that to 27 amps, so it's suitable to use with our little generator we have here. Using that current limiting option in the servo, you can drop that current down to suit the device you're going to be charging the system with. So it's a very handy option. It's temperature down here is the battery bank, sitting at 18.5 degrees. It's been dropping down to about 10 degrees overnight at the moment. I have uh, had three alarms come up at that 10 degree point. 10 degrees is no worries with these lithium batteries. Just have to make sure you stay above zero degrees Celsius when charging any sort of lithium battery. In 12 months, I used 800 kilowatt hours off of the generator. Most of this energy was consumed starting up the system, charging the batteries, uh, getting things all correct. There was a fair bit to set the system up in the first couple of months. There was a little bit of power used there 
and also when we get uh, a little bit of cyclone fallout, we're a fair way from where the cyclones occur, but uh, we get several days of really wet, cloudy weather. We have had to use it a couple of times there just to top up a little bit. But apart from that, it's all been off grid. I'll drag the other calculator across here now. This shows you how much energy was provided by solar. 16,809 kilowatt hours. At the moment, we're paying 34 cents per kilowatt hour if we were buying it from the grid. So times that 16,809 by 34 cents. In the last 12 months, I've saved $5,715 on energy. Over here, it's only cost $272 for 12 months. So it's a very good outcome. We'll take a look at the VRM portal and we'll just see how the system has ramped up from the beginning. Things will look a bit better in the next 12 months. In the beginning, we only had a five KVA system. Then I upped it to 10 and then it was working very well. So I decided to go for it and upgrade it again to the 15 KVA. It's gonna be very interesting next year to see how much energy we can produce from the system. It's gonna be a lot more than this. Can't wait to see how it goes. If you'd like to support the work I've been doing on YouTube and Patreon, you can always hit that subscribe button. It's totally free, it doesn't cost a thing. And also give our videos a like. This really supports us and helps the YouTube algorithm. This is the VRM portal. It has a couple of extra details on it. Just take a quick look. Here's the AC coupled Fronius unit. 1.2 kilowatts being provided via the AC couple here, straight to the house. And then we have the 5,600 watts or 5.6 kilowatts from the DC coupled system through the inverters and then into the house. There's the battery, 99.8. It's pretty much just floating there. I have my float voltage at 54.2. My bolt charging voltage is 55 volts. I set the charging voltages a little bit lower than factory default. This puts a little bit less stress on the batteries. Scroll down here. We can see the solar input throughout the year. At the start in July, we weren't uh, off grid for very long there. Then when it comes to August, there's your five kilowatt system. And then up in around November, we would have moved up to the 10 kilowatt, probably October, November. And then in December, up to the 15 kilowatt. And then from then on, that system's been in operation. The production in winter is still fairly good here. We'll go out and take a look at the arrays, see how we've generated that energy. While well, you guys, be sure to check out the rest of the channel either on YouTube or Patreon. Seats of info there. All the wiring diagrams of how everything's put together. Surge protection. There's an episode on thermal monitoring. How the MultiPlus systems are combined in parallel. How we power our hot tub for free using our 100% static charge relay. It's a very handy feature. There's plenty there to take a look at on either of the platforms. Be sure to subscribe to either. This way you won't miss out on any future episodes. Let's go and take a look outside. You see there we've got the eight kilowatt system running, heating the house. That runs all off grid. And then out here, the spa. That's heating at the moment, off grid as well. So as soon as those batteries get to 100%, relay triggers and pulls the spar on. We keep that at 39 and a half degrees. Really nice in the middle of winter. Another great way to support the channel is to become a member. Hit the join button below 
and you get access to all the members only videos. Leave us a comment or if you have any questions you can message us and talk to us directly. In those members only videos I'll take you through step by step how I wired each item together to create the entire off-grid solar system. We've used several different array designs to gather the solar energy. This one on the roof here is an 11 panel westerly and over the back side on the east side of the roof there are another two easterly arrays. There's a northerly array below the roof ventilation. That's one of the grid connected units. There's another easterly on the other side there that's grid connected as well. So they're totally separate to the off grid system. Those four panels feed into the AC coupled Fronius and there's another three on the end of that section of roof there pointing north. Got the lighting rod up there to protect those panels from any strikes. Check out the video on that one. Here we got an east-west combo. These are wired in parallel. Get a nice smooth flow of energy all day long. Uh, up on the carport, some bifacial panels. There's our second lightning rod. Make sure we're entirely protected across the property. Those bifacial arrays actually provide more power than is specified on the panel. They be very good. So I've been really happy with those ones. Been a really good panel. You can check out the episode of how that entire array has been put together. Down here we got the off-grid shed and the garden shed. They're covered with another array, just mainly for protection. That array is still good for about a thousand watts. So it's well worth having there for that added protection and that little kick. We'll take a look at the entire system inside the off-grid shed now. To get that solar energy back to the shed and also the power up to the house. I dug a trench down the backyard and installed several conduits. Run down to this little shed here. We get a lot of rain here in storm season. I've used these cheap pipe fittings as an air inlet that ensures no water gets up in there when the fans are running. Let's go and take a look inside. Take a look at this battery bank first. It's roughly 42 kilowatt hours. 16 batteries. There are four batteries in each bank in series to make up the 48 volts. And then those banks are all connected in parallel. Got my battery gauge monitor. Got my battery gauge up here press of a button I can see the exact charge of every battery make sure things are balanced Got two of them one for each side there the gauges correspond with the battery in the bank so this one here is that top left and so on This unit here is how we get most of our solar energy. It's the 450-200 MPPT. It has four arrays feeding into it. You can now put 200 amps into the battery at 48 volts. The energy from that flows through the 48 volt bus, through the protection either go to the battery bank or over to the inverters. This unit here is the original inverter we purchased 12 months ago. We purchased that inverter and this MPPT. A few second hand solar panels, 
and one bank of batteries. So we only had four batteries and those two units and a few solar panels just as a test. And I was really impressed with how things were. So after that, we invested into that second unit there. And also added a couple of little MPPTs. Once I saw those savings keep rolling in, purchased the third unit. It's our second slave unit. That's the last inverter I bought. There's the 15 kVA system in total. Worked out quite nicely. Everything fit on that panel really well. Now that we've had that system, I've been able to add all of the air conditioning and the spa. So before that, we were a little bit limited to how much we could use. And now with this system here, so powering a four bedroom home with two kids and two adults, not a problem. Down here are the solar arrays. These are the circuit breakers that protect the system from the arrays. Here we've got the little northerly and the little easterly feeding into the 250-60 and the 150-35. The 150-35 is the little one across the top of these sheds and the 250-60 array is the one on top of the carport. Here are the other four arrays that come in here. The easterly on the far side of the house, that east-west on top of the workshop. You know, that westerly, that was that 11 panel string, and then another easterly on the far side of the house. That's six arrays in total feed into this shed. We've got down here six lots of DC surge protection. So one surge device for each of those arrays. These surge devices We'll trip the circuit breakers if we ever get a surge on that DC system. These will allow a large inrush of current to travel through them. And they're on the load side of these circuit breakers here, which makes them trip. That same setup is on the AC side as well. Even though we're not connected to the grid, I still wanted to have some surge protection on that AC side. You can check out all the videos on how that's installed. This Weedmuller surge device connects to the servo and you can send me an email if there ever happens to be an issue. Here's our battery monitor. Just a basic gauge there, it's very handy. The relay on the back of this device is what controls the 100% SOC relay for the spa. So that's a good little unit to have and integrate into the system. Below that one is the servo. It's that little computer that hooks up to the unit and pretty much runs the show. It gives you that interface on the computer and you can hook up to your phone via Bluetooth or wireless. You've got your relays there for triggering different things. You can do that directly from your phone. So it's pretty much a must for these Victron systems is to get that servo. You don't have to have it, but it uh, adds a lot of features. Over this side, we've got the DC isolators for those MPPTs. And this is the negative link for the uh, inverters. It goes straight back to the battery on the negative terminal and also to the chassis via that orange cable there. You can see exactly how wide these units on some of the other episodes on the channel. Go through step by step exactly how things are put together. Nearly everything's been documented on the channel. So if you ever want to look anything up, just take a look. You should find what you're looking for. This is the main off-grid board. 
This is what feeds the house. 63 amp circuit breaker onto a 16 millimeter square twin earth cable. It's a circular cable running 600 mil underground up to the house. The other circuit breakers there are back from the generator input. That's also isolated by that contactor. So when I need to pull it in, I can do that via the servo. Once that generator is up and running, you can hit that relay and the unit will synchronize and start charging the batteries via that generator. We've only had to do this a few times, charging off that generator. It's mainly during the setup, charging those new batteries from factory. And only a couple of times once we've had those fallout days from the cyclones. This is where I have the parallel connection to the system. Those three inverters connect to this point and then feed up to that main board. Next to that, created a fuse block for all of the low voltage devices. It was easy to have the fuses out here on the panel. It's easy to monitor and maintain. In my opinion, you're better off having a unit like this in a standalone shed somewhere away from the house. Just in case something happens, you're not affected. I feel very safe having this in my backyard. There's barely anything that can go wrong. The system looks after itself. The Victron system is very safe. It has a lot of uh, safety devices built in, so it will shut itself down pretty much before anything goes wrong. The batteries also have an inbuilt BMS. These protect each of them individually. And if there's any overcharging or under voltage, that BMS shuts down. Also got fuse protection on each of the banks. If there's ever an issue on one of those banks, that fuse can blow and it won't affect the rest of the system. There's also the double pole main breakers. You can switch them off at any time. Just drop the system right out, make it entirely safe. That will isolate everything pretty much. Hit those two and then drop out your arrays and the whole system is shut down. Obviously you don't do that unless it's an emergency. You actually shut it down following the proper procedure. I've shown you that in one of my videos when I upgraded these MCCVs. To avoid damaging inrush current to the capacitors when closing these breakers, you should use a pre-charging circuit. The pre-charger bleeds voltage into those capacitors until it reaches the same potential as the battery capacitors are inside the MPPTs and the inverters. So without doing that, you'll see a large arc flash across your terminals inside your breaker. That really gives those capacitors a big whack. It's uh, not really good for the system. So make sure you always use a pre-charger. I've made an episode on how I built my pre-charger. Make sure you check that out. Makes things a lot safer and a lot smoother. You can hear the fans running on those inverters because they're supplying that air conditioner and the spa. A fairly quiet unit. I've got up here a thermostat so when the temperature rises past 28 degrees, the fans come on and ventilate the shed. There's a barrel fan in the intake here. And then another fan mounted in the ceiling there below a whirly bird. So now 
Now we have the cool air being pumped in down there, past those circuit breakers, up through the MPPT and the inverters. It's dragged across the room and then expelled. It's pretty cool here at the moment, being winter. So it uh, doesn't run too much at the moment. You can see it cools down really quickly at the, this time of year. We're going to take a look at that AC coupled system now, out the back. That's the Fronius Primo. It's coupled to the AC board. A big thank you to all the subscribers that have jumped on board and followed our off-grid journey for the previous year. And also it's been great to read all the comments about all of the different off-grid systems you've had. Here's the Primo, connected on the AC side. It's shut down at the moment. The frequency shifting would have gone above 53 hertz. So I'd shut that unit down because we're already at the max voltage of the batteries. Once uh, we start using a bit more load, that'll kick back in and provide power from this AC side. It's a very handy system. How the frequency of the Victron system will ramp down and switch off the Fronius once those batteries are charged and you're not using any power. Rather than overcharging the system, they just talk to each other and everything's done automatically. See there, the frequency shifting would have dropped below that 50 hertz and switched that frontage unit back on. It'll do a self test and fire up. What would have happened is the whole system would have been fired right up providing the spar with energy. The spar would have heated right up and switched off. There would have been an inrush of charge voltage and the Vitron system would have shut this front end off and also ramped down those MPPTs. Then once everything stabilizes, it'll just bring it all back online again. There we go watts. That's only with the seven panels so like I said before it's a bit of work to be done there. Got a little bit more room on the roof, we'll add a couple more panels in the future. I've just received a package in the mail. These are the indicator lights for the panel I'm going to make up. It's going to be the next episode I make. I'm going to have a couple of these on a panel so I know exactly what the system is doing at certain stages. That blue one is going to be for the spa. It's when the battery is at 100%. That blue indicator will come on on the indicator panel inside. The red one there is going to be for when the generator is active. And the green light there, that's to show the state that the grid supply is in. I've made a wiring diagram of how the system's going to be. So check that one out. And then, like I say, in the next episode, I'll be actually physically wiring that into the system. We hope you've enjoyed our off-grid journey over the last 12 months. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Hit that notification bell. You can keep up to date on future episodes. We look forward to another year off-grid. G'day, guys. Welcome back to Organic Power. Thanks for tuning in. Oh, I was meant to say. <laughs> <laughs> warm up. That's just a warm up. Geez, you're a bit of a stumbler. G'day, guys. Welcome back to Organic Power. Hello. Thanks for joining in. Joining in. Tuning in. G'day, everyone. Welcome back to Organic Power. 
Hello, thanks for joining in. Oh, I'll set it again! No, oh, there we go. Don't squish me too much. Hi! What's that one over there? Yeah, oh, that's this. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> and the camera is here. That's right, it was there. G'day everyone, thanks for tuning in to Organic Shower. No, that's my life. Try it again, really.